This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so just let me recap what exactly we have discussed in a previous session. So in previous session, we discussed the concept of EPPM, Enterprise Portfolio and Project Management, uh, which is having four major modules in, 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 uh, on, on premise, like uh, first is project system, then, uh, then uh, PPM, Portfolio and Project Management, and then CPM, Commercial Project Management, and then uh, EPC, Enterprise Project Connection. Okay, so these are the four basic modules which comes within EPPM, Enterprise Portfolio and Project Management. If you are uh, moving to uh, that cloud solution, there is one more module called Innovation Management, which is having the concept of idea submission and approval. And based on that, we can, we can transfer this approved idea as a proposal into PPM. So that is also solution available in, on cloud. We are having three ways to deploy this solution. First is on-premise, second is cloud, and third is hybrid. On-premise, this responsibility comes within the customers uh, where he has to take care of all infrastructure, license, and implementation. However, in cloud, this has to be provided by uh, infrastructure or uh, IT uh, service company. And then hybrid is the combination of both the solution, on-premise and on-cloud. Okay. So this is just recap here. Okay, so here in SAP EPPM, we are going to focus on portfolio and project management, which is having two components. One is a PPM PFM and another is a PPM PRO. So PPM PFM, this is for portfolio management and PPM PRO is for project management. So when you are going to implement SAP PPM, okay, basically SAP PPM, because you need to take care these modules separately like in ppm you need to understand that activation of a component in ppm for ppm pfm and ppm pro similarly in cpm also we are having business functions based on that we can activate the different uh, functionality like uh, workspace finance financial planning and issue and change management so here mainly in ppm we are going to focus on these two components, one is a PPM PFM, another is a PPM PRO. Okay. So when we are getting any, let's say any system for implementation, we need to understand these two components supposed to be activate first. Okay. So this responsibility comes within basis. So basis will activate these two and then you need to check whether your, your basic configuration are available or not. Basic configuration means like uh, some of configurations have been given by SAP. Okay, that is that need to be copied from client zero to your current client. Okay, I hope you understand the concept of client here. So what happened? Let's say if these basic settings have not been copied. In that case, this will be empty system. You will not get all this classes and some basic uh, RFC uh, details and all okay or the activation of switches we will understand what are the what are these all things like switches and other functionalities okay so these basic settings has to be copied from client zero to your current client okay in, here in SAP uh, before before S4 HANA we used to copy the entire system from client zero to your current client but in S4 HANA, we are having a functionality where we can we can copy a specific specific basic configuration from your client zero to current client. We will understand this. Okay, I am I am having a separate session to understand these concepts like how we are activating the business functions, how we are copying from client zero to your current client. However, this functionality comes within basis, but as a function consultant, we and we supposed to understand if any missing data is there so we can just ask basis team or responsible person to take care of it okay that is my main intention here so here ppm and pfm so this component when it is going to be <clears throat> activate that we need to understand that what exactly component we need to activate as per our business requirement okay so gradually once we are going to understand the business requirement or the the scenarios which we are covering in the ppm based on that you will realize 
that where exactly we need to which which component exactly we need to activate here and here we understood the concept of ui and ux in previous session uh, the user type okay and how we are accessing the system so we understand that uh, <clears throat> there are three different ways to access the sap s Warana system first is the sap gui where all the transactions will be there okay based on the transaction code you can access you can access the particular transaction in the system okay and sap netweaver where you can access the business transaction through link okay and sap fury where you are having applications to this particular transaction here sap ppm doesn't have any transaction code to access so this means in sap gui we don't have anything to access here as a transaction but all the configuration will happen here on gui only <clears throat> however all the user transaction has to be take care here on sap netweaver or in sap fury why i'm saying sap netweaver because in some of client is still they are using older version of ppm okay so in that case you can access the system through sap netweaver but as per s4 hana that all transactions need to be accessed through sap fury only <clears throat> okay so when we are when we are uh, going to implement sap ppm as a function consultant we are supposed to have access of gui system okay to do the configuration and along with that how we are going to test this particular transaction in fury that has to be aligned with my system right so the first thing the component supposed to be activated okay then you can check here in the configuration and second your system supposed to be integrate with fury okay so that you can access all these transaction here for the fury application okay we'll understand what are the standard fury applications in sap ppm okay sometimes what happen let's say if you are going to implement in that case when you are checking your fury screen you will not have all these transactions listed here okay so how you need to understand and what are the standard application and how you need to approach to your fury consultant or basis team to just get activated all these fury applications so these are some basic things which we need to understand okay <clears throat> so in previous session we discussed one uh, business case okay that in what kind of scenario we supposed to implement sap ppm that was the basic understanding of one one scenario okay just let me again so business case we have taken from godrej godrej group of companies which is having many legal companies within this godrej group of companies okay and uh, we are we are mainly focusing on these three scenarios and down the line we will understand these all three different scenarios here like for it companies how we are going to manage the project for properties like real estate how we are going to manage the project and godrej consumer product like if we are getting any mtu scenario or this kind of scenario how we are going to manage our project further so just let's take one scenario that godrej group which is having uh, the three legal companies within it godrej infotech godrej properties and godrej consumer project product here godrej properties which is real estate companies having one vision and mission of the organization okay which is supported by business strategies to achieve and then strategic rule so what happened to achieve this vision and mission we need to follow the strategic rule and here sap ppm is helping us to to choose or to finalize the particular project out of all these submitted proposals okay so you can see when any proposal is going to submit then it need to be analyzed okay once it is once it is decided that it is fitting as per my vision and mission of the organization where these business strategies and strategic rules are helping us okay to align with this vision and mission so here ppm is helping us to just choose a particular project which is really supporting our vision and mission of the organization okay <clears throat> just a second please
वन सेकेंड प्लीज ओके सो हियर इफ आई एम टेकिंग एग्जाम्पल ऑफ गोदरेज ग्रुप ऑफ कंपनी सो हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिसाइड द पोर्टफोलियोज ओके सो लेट मी जस्ट जम्प टू दैट दिस डेफिनेशन ओके सो दिस डेफिनेशन ऑल्सो वी विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन प्रीवियस सेशन एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट द रूल्स ओके रूल्स इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो हियर whenever we are going to access the sap ppm system first component need to be checked second whether it is already integrated with fury okay and then you can check some of fury application and third rules are there to access this fury application or not so is three things supposed to be there and uh, then you can start to work okay and generally the basis team already copying the client zero to your current client if anything is missing that also need to be checked so we'll see all these things further in this session but before that let us continue the same topic which we were discussing in previous session that is my understanding of portfolio okay so here sap portfolio uh, P in ppm uh, understand this portfolio definition or portfolio is the highest structure object within portfolio structure portfolio basically is a group of portfolio item that is managed in a coordinated manner in order to achieve a company's objectives at any given period of time okay so what we are saying portfolio is group of portfolio items so this portfolio items is nothing it's just a proposal okay or this may be an initiative or this may be item okay we are having we are choosing different terminology in business okay so here portfolio is a group of portfolio proposals or initiative or item which is being managed in a coordinated manner to achieve objectives of organization means like we are directly or indirectly supporting the mission and vision of the organization okay so what happen generally when we are creating any proposal okay when we are creating any proposal that supposed to be aligned with any objective of the organization generally what happen in the organization they are having a long list of the objectives okay let's say 50 objectives are there 20 objectives are there then how exactly this proposal is going to align with your objective of the organization okay that need to be checked before starting any project okay then here what comes portfolio definition of portfolio is highest structure so here when we are going to start any transaction in ppm okay we supposed to have portfolio structure okay and this portfolio structure is having portfolio definition and bucket so portfolio def definition is the umbrella where all the objects comes within it so if i'm saying real estate portfolio means all the project proposal initiative all the transaction relevant to this particular business line need to be considered within the same umbrella called real estate okay we cannot have anything out of portfolio means if anything is there then it is separate it is not relevant to that particular portfolio okay the next comes portfolio reflects the strategic structure of a company there could either be one portfolio for the overall company or different portfolios reflecting independently managed area one portfolio is single entity and not related to other portfolios so means one portfolio is a single entity that is not going to be transfer or 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 or, or uh, like uh, uh, push any data to other portfolios okay we'll understand this this concept how exactly we need to align with the requirement of client okay so here first we are having portfolio definition which is having a further segregation based on the process based on the location or based on the product okay these are the three major things which we need to consider to define the portfolio structure here okay so we are having buckets bucket is nothing it's just you can consider it's a, it's a group of similar project or similar program or bucket you can compare with the program itself okay and then further it can be segregated in next level of bucket so generally we are designing or we are defining this portfolio structure based on the reporting requirement of the organization that is our main focus first is reporting requirement okay 
and second whenever you are going to understand the steps that need to be defined as per workflow requirement okay so let us understand first the portfolio <clears throat> okay in general we will take one example here what it means let's see discuss about the indian government okay. indian government when any election happen okay let's say this now it is election is going on in india so here when election is happening a particular party they are defining their manifesto okay so what is manifesto exactly okay what is manifesto let us understand that okay first of all companies generally they used to have vision okay vision and mission let's say if i'm taking example of bjp they are already having some vision and mission okay and accordingly <clears throat> they are defining their objectives so vision and mission they are having for next 25 years 30 years 50 years like this way when they are proposing that these are the things which we need to which we are going to implement in next 25 years or 30 years or 50 years as per if we comes in the power okay and when any election happen they used to define the objectives okay so objectives which is going to align with the vision and mission okay this will not be anything different so in objectives let's say if i am taking any example as per their department let's say if i am considering one is uh, health ministry okay objectives let us consider in this way uh, there is health ministry and there is a railway ministry and education ministry so health and railway and education so what they say if they are coming in power for health for health we will construct at least one every district will have hospital okay so this is one objectives here okay another another is all primary health centers will be equipped this is another objective similarly in railways they are having some objectives 100 new trains as per vande bharat program okay in education each district will have have at least one government school just for example okay so this is their objective okay <clears throat> so what will happen let's say as per their manifesto they have defined everything okay and uh, if they are winning then once they are going to implement whatever the objectives they have defined so that whatever they are going to implement that has to be align with the objectives for example whenever they need to start to construct one government hospital okay so what will they do this is going to be considered within this particular ministry health ministry and align with the objective every district will have one government hospital so this is the objective this is the line okay so for example let's say if i am going to propose a new hospital 
new hospital as the above. This is one of the district in UP. So let's say this is a proposal. This is only proposal under health ministry. With reference to the objective, every district will have one government hospital. So in that case, this particular this particular proposal will be submit, and who will submit it? As per the Indian order administration, maybe some instruction will come from the <clears throat> higher authority government to the district magistrate, and district magistrate along with the all responsible person, he will decide. He will just submit this proposal, and then it will go for next level of approvals. Okay, so this is a proposal, and once this proposal is analyzed technically whether we really require this hospital here in this area second financially whether we are having enough fund to just execute this project then third resources do we have proper resources other resources to execute this proposal once it is all level analyzed and then it will be submitted to the next level means your finance department or other department to just approve once it is done then it is going to implement as a project in the system okay <clears throat> so this is a proposal here and next level this will become a project so the meaning here how we are going to understand the entire ppm that we need to consider this this particular scenario in mind okay that this is vision and mission of the organization along with that we are having a particular objective for a particular department and then whatever the proposals are coming and then how it is going to further make it as a project okay so here <clears throat> the portfolio is health ministry railway is another portfolio education ministry is another portfolio okay you can create portfolio as indian government also which is having a different bucket health ministry railway ministry education ministry okay if you want to transfer if you want to see the cross bucket data at one place in that case it is required otherwise not otherwise it is suggested to go with the individual portfolio like health ministry is one portfolio railway ministry is one portfolio education ministry is one portfolio down the line we'll understand why we need it separately because when we are going to understand these proposals and item proposal and items then how exactly we need to segregate based on the different requirement okay so we'll understand later but primarily better to keep it all these separate okay the question comes let's say if this is an individual portfolio health ministry one second please yeah so here let's say health ministry railway ministry and education ministry these are all three different portfolios here okay and uh, uh, health ministry basically what will happen whatever the reports they are having they are not going to share with the railway ministry okay and railway ministry is not going to share anything with education or health what they will do they will submit their report their progress everything to the indian government our prime minister okay so in that case what we need to do we need to create this separate portfolio individual portfolio for all the departments okay and to get the report at a final then we'll use bi reporting or other reporting tools okay so that is our primary understanding here so this is one portfolio this is another portfolio and this is another portfolio health ministry so what standard definition tell us that we supposed to have a similar project similar proposal project initiative at one place okay or within a program so all these things make a portfolio so all relevant project only will be considered here health or this particular portfolio the meaning is if you are going to start a new rail new bande bharat rail in that case it is not going to consider within health ministry because it doesn't comes within the same type of project 
okay so we just need to understand this aggregation also okay so similarly same things happen in the companies also let's say if i am taking example of one let's say utility company <clears throat> Okay, which is having all the department. Okay, so let's say this is one company generation is one department. So here this is for electricity generation, and uh, the next is transmission. third is distribution so this is one of other example so here utility this is a one portfolio because all projects supposed to be relevant to utility only right and here electricity generation this department is responsible to generate the electricity and here transmission department it is going to it is responsible to transmit the electricity from the generation point to the distribution point and then the distribution department is responsible to just distribute this electricity to individual consumer okay or if you want if you are having a separate uh, reporting for a department level in that case uh, you can keep a separate portfolio but in this example better to keep one portfolio as utility and these electricity transmission and distribution can be considered as a bucket okay similarly let me take you example for IT company <clears throat> okay IT company what happened here let's see if I'm taking example of Wipro Wipro company is having infrastructure or let Wipro InfoTech it's much more still same example so previously this Wipro, there were two companies, one was Wipro Infotech, another was Wipro Technology and here Wipro Infotech was focusing in Asia and Middle East. Okay. And here Wipro Technology was focusing in other part of world, let's say. U and US. So here you can see this segregation is happening based on location. Okay, so here Wipro InfoTech and Wipro Technology. However, this is having the same IT portfolio, but segregation is happening based on the location. So reporting can be different. Your responsible people who's who are required to have this reporting based on the location, they may be different. So we can define the portfolio structure like this way okay or sometimes let's say within within Wipro InfoTech itself we can segregate based on the technology that is the SAP technology projects or other technology projects like this way so this you need to understand when you're discussing with your client that uh, first you need to explain that this is the way how we are going to define the portfolio and second you need to understand what are the different types of project or proposals they are managing in particular area okay and accordingly you need to design the solution so let me come back to here definition of portfolio here okay so now we understood what is portfolio definition we understood what is the buckets how we are going to exactly define the buckets here okay so this combinedly uh, portfolio definition and bucket we are calling it as a standard portfolio structure okay standard portfolio structure uh, in system to manage your all proposal projects and everything we supposed to have one portfolio standard structure okay but to support this standard portfolio structure we can create a multiple classification structure also okay we'll understand that so here <clears throat> come back to here in the portfolio structure can be set up with the portfolio bucket according to the organizational structure yes based on the functional process or product of the company so there are different 
different ways to define this portfolio structure okay a bucket consists of set of portfolio items each bucket is a part of overall portfolio structure so this means bucket always will be within portfolio definition you cannot create individual bucket only a bucket is always related to portfolio aggregated financial and capacity planning can be performed on bucket and same can be compared with the planning data of the item so first approach was to just understand that how my proposal and project is going to align with my objective and vision and mission of the organization okay and then reporting this supposed not to be any cross reporting for the portfolio okay in that case you need to have a separate portfolio and third thing comes like your capacity and financial planning requirement okay finally what happen reportings used to happen based on these two parameters right resource and financials requirement so that is also need to understand to define the portfolio structure okay because whatever you are having at last level that is going to be that is going to total up to the next level so this approach happen from bottom to top okay for example let's say if i'm if i'm taking this example here in my indian government okay so let's say if i'm considering this indian government is one portfolio just consider okay health ministry railway ministry and education ministry these are all are different buckets so in that case whatever the budget you are going to define for particular department that is going to aggregate at top level okay so same things happen in the budget when we are when government is proposing the budget okay they are having the full segregation that particular health ministry they will have 100000 crore and we are planning for these many of hospitals these many of infrastructure okay so this everything need to be define that for particular objective we are going to spend this much of amount okay and this much of amount means it is going to the next level of bucket value okay and then it is going to be aggregate this is going to be total up to the next level so this total amount you will get it here in the health ministry and for individual department and then your total amount is going to be considered at top level of bucket so we are saying this is Twenty uh, thousand crore of budget, total budget. So this means this is a total portfolio value, okay. So here and same thing is happen for the other resources also, okay. Like if you are deploying any resources or machineries in that case, how it is going to be managed? That is also as per your planning, okay. So I am taking example again and again from the government because you understand that how exactly it happens. Similar things happen in the organization also. okay so here whatever we are going to uh, plan financial values here in last level that is going to aggregate to the to the top level these are the functions of portfolio bucket here okay first is setting for financial and capacity planning okay prior to that if you have any any question please let me know here from this slide any question Shamsuddin, anyone? Yeah, what I was trying to check is that what is portfolio initiative? Ah, so pro ah, initiative, so initiative, just consider as to just consider as of now or to just understand because it's very initial stage. Initiative is just like a proposal. Okay. Okay. So there is a, it is similar. So we'll understand this object here in coming sessions. right okay okay so these are some of functions available here in portfolio bucket first is setting for financial and capacity planning okay so here in portfolio bucket we need to set a currency okay so here for a particular bucket we can have currency individual currency then set financial period breakdown period breakdown means like the financial period supposed to have different in different companies generally it happens based on country 
like how exactly they are having their financial period like in india it is from april to march okay and us it is january to december so similarly you can have this provision here in the bucket level then set capacity period breakdown okay similarly for this one also set financial planning start date and end date set demand planning start date and end date so for a particular period when you are defining the portfolio structure what period you want to consider for this uh, portfolio okay that we can keep here in the bucket okay next is financial planning we can do the financial planning in bucket we can do the forecast planning and what are the actuals let's say in particular bucket whatever the projects you are executing okay and with reference to that project whatever the ex whatever the actual cost has been posted or actual revenue is posted that you can bring back here to for the reporting purpose here in the bucket similarly for the capacity planning you can define the demand and whatever the actual assignment of resources happen that you can pull back here into the ppm bucket level document you can upload directly document into ppm server or you can integrate with dms server document management system so we will understand some basics of dms also in this batch and here also how we are getting actual cost in project system and then how we are uh, bringing back to ppm that will also will understand and some basics of ps also okay i know that uh, all the participants are having good experience in the project system but you will take one initial cycle to understand how the project is initiated what is the planning and then execution and then how we are getting actual cost in the project system and then next level how integrated these values is going to be pushed back to ppm the next is dashboard and reporting so here in sap ppm we are having two types of reporting one is a uh, bc report business context viewer okay and uh, then uh, some reports like based on the bi how you can define the report so we'll understand that this is a complete understanding of flow of data in ppm portfolio structure in sap ppm so we are having organization objectives we are defining the portfolio definition we are having buckets then buckets is again segregated in next level of bucket and then whenever we are going to submit as a proposal in ppm we are submitting this as a initiative so initiative is a objective sorry object so initiative is a one of object like how we are having project definition wbs similarly initiative is also one object in ppm so here initiative and once it is approved then to to achieve the objectives of this initiative we can execute multiple project which is my item okay and this item directly can be integrated to ps project this is a one scenario or we can integrate this ppm item to ppm project and this ppm project further can be integrated to internal order or to ps project scm human capital management msp microsoft project and mrs multi resource scheduling okay so as it is what exactly we can see here on this slide we'll see in upcoming sessions how we are understanding or flow of this data any question here Yama, yeah one question in the initiative uh, you mentioned about the proposal right is it something similar similar to investment management where you yes. have yeah so it is like you can just for initial understanding you can consider like a appropriation request mm -hmm. yeah okay. right but right. here see here in investment management you are having better control of budget and all these things distribution and all this is not available here this is the purpose of this module is different okay so down the line you will understand this yeah but okay. to understand yes this you can compare with the appropriation request sure yeah okay so just a second let me log in into the system okay then we'll come here
One second, please. Okay, just it is taking time to connect. Okay, so Hmm. I hope you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so here, here uh, to do all the configuration, we need to log in into GUI. Okay, and to execute all the transaction here, we need to launch to Fury. Okay, so here you will get a link to access the Fury, but you can access the same from GUI also. Okay, so just let me show you here settings. Okay, so this is the transaction code forward slash UI2 forward slash FLP. Okay, so just click here and it will take you to Fury. So Okay, so this is Fury system here. You will see all these groups here. Okay, so individual groups is having individual transactions for example let's say if i'm checking here risk management okay this is not part of ppm by the way this is just to explain like how generally we used to have all the application in fury so this is your uh, uh, space we used to call it as a group or a space okay so here this particular space will have pages okay so this arrangement need to be done by fury and basis consultant our job is to just say that these are the application which i need in system okay so here this is a group or this is a we used to call it as a space and we can make a drill down for a particular pages here so let's say this i'm saying employee ehs so this is a one page this is a another page okay like this way or just based on the drill down we can just navigate to particular page okay so this is space then once we are clicking here it will show us a list of the pages and then once we are clicking here on that page, it will take you to that particular page where you can get all the application. Okay, so these are all are my application, which I'm checking for environment management. So this data issue, environment data explorer, manage compliance scenarios, these all are my application. So to execute any transaction, you just need to click here. Okay, and it will take you to the particular transaction. Okay, and here, <sighs> To see other details, let's see if you are not able to find. Once I'm coming here, okay, let me just show you here. When I'm coming here, I can see all my groups here, employee, hazards, risk. So everything it is relevant to EHSM here in this system. Okay, this is supposed to have some PPM transaction also. So let's say if I just want to find or if I just want to add any application here in my system, you just come to here in the profile. Okay, this is a user ID. Here you will get recently active, recently uh, navigated all the applications, frequently used application. You can check it here. Uh, 
uh, other settings you can find here and application finder is to just to find application here let me show you here go to application finder okay and uh, you will see catalog user menu and sap menu the concept is same sap menu is having all the transaction which is available in standard system okay and user menu this is relevant to your user whatever is assigned to your user as a rule and catalog based on defined catalog in the theory sap menu let me show you here some transaction for example if i just want to add any transaction from project system or ppm project system i'll show you because it's directly based on the transaction here so let me show you here for the logistics and here you can see the project system okay and then basic data master data equipment material uh, this let me take a template standard milestone standard wbs element for example so these are the application which are given for these transactions okay so just let me add this application here in my home page the pages okay so here you can see so these pages or these particular uh, you can say this particular group has to be defined by theory consultant okay as of now i'm just adding some transaction here on my home page so here it is added app changed and this is added already in home page similarly i can add it here you just click here and click on that particular page now you can get all this application here in your home page you come here and you will see here create standard wbs change standard wbs so directly you can access this transaction here okay now i i'll show you here uh, when we are moving to my gui system here okay as i explained that first of all when we are getting system in hand we need to check some basics whether all these things are available or not so to check go to uh, one second one second okay let me just skip that one go to configuration first okay go to configuration go to sap reference img go to here you will see portfolio and project management sap portfolio and project management so here as we know that we are having two sub component one is a portfolio another is a project so all relevant configuration of portfolio you will see here and all relevant configuration for project you will see here common functions wherever we are, we are having integration okay that comes within the common functions okay come to the portfolio management you will see here global customizing base system interface system user management utilities and bodies okay global customizing go to global settings check global settings okay let us see this first caution the table is cross client and it is a standard delivered configuration okay so here you can see these all are the areas which is having particular defined name of setting so these all settings are standard settings okay what happen sometimes when you are getting your system in hand you will not see all these settings there okay this will be empty and if these settings are not there in the system some of functionality which is relevant to this particular areas will not work okay so what you need to do you need to ask your basis team to switch or you need to ask to basis team to just copy the settings from client 0 to your current current client so my current client is 400 here okay and what we need to communicate we can communicate as per the component wise that ppm and my ppm settings are not copied or sometimes if you are in the cloud okay that basis team will ask okay let me know exactly the node or details what you want to copy okay so in that case you need to understand here you just need to switch here uh, display technical information sorry one second okay you switch on this here go to additional in additional information go to display key go to img activity okay so what you need to do you need to just exactly communicate this setting okay this additional information that i need to just copy this particular node from client 0 to your current client why generally they ask because 
everything in this system is not required to copy from client zero to your current client and some of places they are very particular that they don't want to keep any garbage data and system unnecessary which is not being used in your business okay so in that case you just need to give this one similarly you will see other standard configuration also like here Uh, like here see actually this is the this is the one which we need to check and second is very important thing is here common functions uh -huh. not here process and service settings hmm, this one Mm, define object link type okay so gradually you will understand exactly why what is the purpose of these settings and why we need it and what exactly we need to ask from other consultants to just do our required configuration here okay so first of all once we have checked it and we communicated to basis and then once he will do all this activity then we need to come here in the system to do the configuration and parallelly we need to ask to basis to oh, sorry this fury team to just activate the applications so here once you are coming the first things comes the portfolio okay so to create a portfolio the kds is portfolio type you know the what is kds any idea no no i never heard about it kds stands for key data structure okay so let's say if you are comparing with your project system, okay? Project system, when you are creating a project, what do you need exactly? You need project definition? Oh, definition, yeah. Sorry, project profile. You need project profile, right? Oh. So let's say if I'm going to create CJ20N here, just understand this because you can easily understand, you can compare from PS here. So create here project. Okay, this is my project profile so whatever the values i am going to get it from configuration that is my kds key data structure and extend it to it whatever the values you are getting from your templates and configuration that comes within the kds key data structure <clears throat> so what happened when we are going to implement okay in that case we need to understand that as per my scenarios what are the different profiles or different values we need to maintain in the configuration we supposed to prepare one file for that excel file okay that this is my project profiles this is my budget profiles these are my planning profile these are my object class okay all these things we used to keep it in one excel okay and accordingly we need to maintain these values in the configuration most of the clients we are we are we are uh, following the nomenclature also it is not like anything you are creating in the system okay so all configuration supposed to start with Z following with some nomenclature. Okay. Let's see if I'm taking example of Godrej or some utility company, I can say Z U T 001. This is my project profile one standard project profile, or I can say this is my investment profile project investment project profile. So similarly, we can segregate this. Okay. So the first thing which you are going to configure here is your portfolio type based on which you are going to create a portfolio in your system. So here, go to portfolio management, go to global customizing, go to portfolio dependent settings here. You will see defined portfolio types, okay? Here in the standard system, already some values are given, but in your client system, you will not get, okay? Because this will be empty and you just need to create the values here. So here portfolio type, let's say this is information technology here, okay? and uh, that's it just we need to create let's say if i'm creating here z z ppm 01 just to understand and then that's it so this is the first thing which we need to maintain here okay and uh, that's it then based on that you can create a portfolio in the system okay so the limitations in this system because it's new just new i just need to get activate all these 
uh, applications here in the system okay so <clears throat> after today's session i'll i'll get activated and then we'll proceed with the practice here in the same system okay uh, Rama, so i have a question here yeah uh, so in my system i have activated the roles and when i went and checked the project definitions i was getting an error there are no uh, definitions found contact your system administrator that means these functions are not copied or what uh, can you send me exactly your screenshot of error please okay i will share with you yeah actually this may be something different if it is if okay. it is talking about administrator sometimes it is relevant to your scm integration also just need to check what is that okay okay so let me close this today's session here okay and we will proceed tomorrow i'll just check the system also and then we'll proceed from so what what is the time for tomorrow rama same 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 time so yeah. um so it's just like let me 